Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Snap Ship Tactics. This is the starter set by Lynn Vander Studios. This is a one to two player game with other game modes as well. It's ages 14 and up and it takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play. And in the game Snap Ship Tactics, it plays kind of like the old X-Wing fighter or maybe similar to you guys who play Warhammer Fantasy or 40K in which you're actually going to be creating your own Snap Ship or Spaceship. You're gonna be utilizing the components to build ships based on certain models that you can choose to make. Um, there are at least three or four for each player in the starter set that you can make, or you can customize your own. Each of these ships are going to get a specific placard that indicates the type of set build that you're going to be able to build with the ship, as well as its base stats. And then based on what's on the ship, you're going to get ship parts that you can utilize throughout the game. Um, after you have built your ship, which is actually the first portion of the game, you go into fighting the ships. You have you create this board and you attack each other, and the first person who drops to zero is the loser, and the other player is the winner. It's a cool, unique modular system that involves kind of a 40k style fighting system with unique uh, combat as far as how you utilize your missiles and how you move your ship. We'll get into that though after I do the setup for the game, how to play, and then of course my review. Setting up the game is not super complicated. After you each have built your ship based on one of the three or four models that you have to choose from or custom made your ship, you're then going to take your main ship card and you'll place it down to the left of you. The ship card is going to tell you how much power your ship starts with. In this case, it's seven for both of them. How much HP, which you'll mark on this tracker here, and then how much uh, evasion, which you'll put down below here. Um, it's also going to tell you your start of turn to end of turn actions, and then you're going to take each of your ship parts and randomly place them from left to right after the right hand side of your main card. Give the first player the initiative marker, which you can determine by roll. After you've set up your board as well, which is described in the main game booklet or custom, custom made your own, of course, this is much smaller than the actual size of the game. It fits this whole table, pretty much this whole large area of the table, but I wanted to condense it so you guys can see the full version of the game. Um, then you're going to get your ships and you're going to set them next to you. The first player to start the game off is going to select to place it an inch um, next to, or right, right adjacent to, I should say, uh, the edge of their side of the player board, which is where they're going to start, and their opponent will not be there. They'll take their turn and then the opponent will place their ship on their edge and they will take their turn. All the extra components you will not be needing are any of the extra pieces that you're not utilizing for other ships, your other ship builds, as well as the other um, different types of weaponry and whatnot. You can set all that aside. Any of the different types of missiles that you're not using you can set aside as well. But what you will need for sure is you're going to need all the orange dice. These are what you're going to use for combat. You're going to need these little um, angles slash movement uh, pieces. Basically, they'll let you angle to move your ship left or right, kind of rotating the, the ship, and they'll also allow you to move uh, a distance. Uh, each player get what's, what's one of these. And then the final thing that you're definitely going to need are these markers here. These indicate the length of your combat. So for instance, maybe I have a combat one uh, Gatling gun. That's the range of it. And then maybe it's two and then maybe it's three, and then maybe it's four. And this is what you use to keep track of how far your um, offensive weaponry is. Well, that's pretty much the base except for the game. Go ahead and get ready to jump into it, but I guess I'll explain how it works first. Okay, so it's my turn and I have the initiative marker and I am the Saber XF-23 fighter, which is this guy right here. And I have chosen to place him right here on the board. Now it's the first turn of the game, so my opponent does not exist currently. So I basically get a chance to set up. How it works is you're going to look at the start of your turn and move across. It'll tell you the first thing that your turn is always to change your evasion to whatever that number is. No matter what it was before, it goes to that number, which in my case is two, bottom here. Then I get to remove a number of power or heat cubes off of my cards here. These are basically my ship components. I can remove any five I want. It could be the blue or the red, which is the power and the heat. After I remove five cubes, then I'm going to be able to rotate my ship. To rotate your ship, you'll take this piece here and you'll look at these two components here. This says S and L, which is the short and long portion of the distance. We're actually just gonna use this as a rotation device. So I will take this and place it next to the front arrow of my ship. And then I will be able to rotate my ship to the other dot. 
After I have done that, that is a rotation, and I'll do the last thing on my turn before I can take my actions, which is I move. In my ship's case, because I'm a faster ship, the saber can actually go the long distance, so I'll take the L, I will place that dot right next to my pointer, which is the front of my ship, and then I will literally move my ship across the way, making sure that it stays exactly as it's supposed to. Now, after I've moved, I'll take my actions, but before we get into that, let's talk about what's on the field here. There are fields, uh, that have dotted lines, which will provide you bonus cover in the game. There's also going to be a symbol on these guys that performs some bonus for you most of the time. Um, one, for instance, will increase your evasion. One will allow you to remove a heat or power from your uh, items here, and so on and so forth. Whenever you move on these areas, in order for you to get the power back, you'll have to move off of them and move on to something else or back onto them. You can't keep their powers though. So these are kind of like a way of giving you kind of a bonus as you traverse through space. Now, that's basically all there is to movement as far as moving your ship around the game board. You don't move your ship outside of the game board, it will be bad for you. Stay within the boundary, which is assigned based at the very beginning of the game. But now I can take my actions, and I actually have seven power cubes. These are my blue cubes that I'm gonna to use to power all of my ship items. I can use my cockpit, I can use my thruster, my wings, my fins, my weapon, and my light missile. Each of these do different things. And basically I have about two or three of them that function based on movement, and then I have two or three of them that function based on damage. And then usually I'll have one or maybe two special actions. Like for instance, my cockpit says that whenever I perform an attack action, I can spend one or two power on this part to reroll that many dice. And that's just my specific cockpit, nobody else's. But let's say that I wanted to get farther into space. Well, I can go ahead and use my jump engine. Now, in order to use any of the actions, I have to choose one on the card. If I have done one before, or if there are already cubes on the card, I cannot use that card. In this case, all my cards are empty, so I can just simply spend two power on the card. Now it says I can rotate one, so I'll take my rotation, and I will rotate back. And then it says I can move long distance. So I'll go ahead and place my L, and I can move my ship, which then can net me a bonus evasion for moving into this tile here. Now I've spent my power, I won't get that back until next turn when I gather five power back, but I can spend more if I would like. Now for instance, if I wanted to, I can use the XF-25 wings, which are my main wings for my ship. I would spend two power, but if ever an action has a red cube for heat, you actually have to take one from the pool. Your power is always going to go back to your ship, and heat will come from the supply and return to the supply. But to use these wings, I need to actually gain a heat. And heat's bad, you don't wanna have it if you can avoid it. This will allow me to basically, um, A, move for one cube, or I can go ahead and move a short distance on either of my sides. So I actually can kind of like side swipe here. And then I can also rotate as well. So there's a lot of different maneuverable like capabilities with these specific types of ships. Now, there's nothing to fight right now. And I've spent five cubes already, and I only get five cubes back on my next turn. So I would end my turn. When your turn is over, the next player will get a chance to go. And of course, it's their first turn this, this game. So they're gonna hit the edge of their side of the board and they will take their turn. They're gonna do the same thing. They'll actually move their um, their defense, or I guess they should say their like evasion to three. They'll remove five cubes. They'll be able to rotate and then they'll be able to move a distance. In this case, this guy goes a short distance. And then they're going to take their actions here and they'll pass and they'll come back to my turn. And on my turn, I'll rinse and repeat, except now I can remove these cubes. Remember, power goes back to your board, and the heat will return here. Okay, let's talk about combat now a little bit. Combat uses these wonderful orange dice here. How combat works is I'll basically spend my power on one of my ship's weapons, like my MK-16 autocannon, and I'll have to check the range. Now, my range is based on the card here. You have to look at the card yourself and see it. And then, of course, I'll look here. Okay, I have a 90-degree range, and it says I have to have it uh, up to 2 in range. So I'll check my range here. Am I within two? I'm not, so I can't simply fire it. So I might actually have to move my with my jump thruster engine. So that would let me kind of rotate this way and then I would move my, I'm just kind of guesstimating here. Then I can now use it and you can say, okay, now I am within range. In which case now I can spend and I'll also, well, I'll just spend these guys here and I can fire. How it works is it says, num so the red is the number of dice, which is four here. 
And then it's going to give me my hit, my amount, uh, what I need to roll the hit, which is, it says here, two plus the evasion of the other ship. So two plus the three from this guy is five. I roll these dice up and then I check to see if I hit. Anything that is not a hit is going to go back. Anything that is, is going to deal a damage to my opponent. So he took two hits here, um, or three hits here, I should say, and he's going to go to 10. Now, if you roll a crit, a crit is kind of like a little fireball. If you hit, you're, gonna, you're guaranteed to hit with a fireball, but not only that, when you hit with a crit, your opponent, or you, either one of you, I guess, will roll this die here, and then based on the number is what weapon or ship part will be disabled, which will flip over. And in order to get that weapon back online, you will need to spend power on your turn to repair it. You'll put a cube on there that will repair it, it will flip over, but the cube will remain, which means you cannot use it this turn, you have to wait till next turn to where you can remove the power. Additionally, if there are any red cubes on one of the ship parts that have been um, chosen to be disabled, you will take damage equal to the number of red cubes on there. Any red and or blue cubes on a ship part that has taken damage is going to be removed. And the only cubes that will go on the damage side are when the player of that ship chooses to place power onto that specific type of weaponry or ship part to flip it over to remove on the next turn. So there are definitely ways in which you can actually damage certain parts and do extra damage to your opponent. Speaking of extra damage to your opponent, if you happen to hit the back of the player's ship, you'll look at the very back of the ship and you'll notice that there's a little uh, explosion-y looking symbol there. So if I manage to hit that, actually his, um, his uh, evasion is going to be reduced by one and it'll do an extra bonus damage on hit on the back of the ship. Uh, if you hit anywhere in the 180 behind the ship, that's going to give you the reduction to evasion. And if you hit the exact back, which is the 90 degree area, that will give you a bonus damage as well. Um, you can also, when you're rolling a crit, if you get lucky when you roll to like damage a part and you actually roll a number that's higher than or not available on the board here, so a zero, uh, I think it's a zero, seven, eight, or crit, you can actually choose which part gets damaged. And yeah, that's the basic thing. You go from one turn to the next, back and forth, taking the actions of each of the individual parts that you want to take. Um, and until somebody dies. So as long as you can remember the, to look at the very portion of your card that just says, okay, move your evasion to the number, remove five cubes, rotate your ship, move your ship, take your actions, pass and rinse and repeat. That's pretty much how the game works. There's some nuances to certain types of combat, uh, specifically like missiles and the ability to like interact um, when it's not your turn to do certain things to prevent damage or whatever. Um, but we'll get into that to my review. But anyway, that's the basic idea to play Snapship Tactics. I think you get the idea. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. The first thing I thought of when I thought of this game was Legos, and then the second thing I thought of was the X-Wing fighter game. This is all about building your own custom ship, utilizing custom parts that you'll put on the edge of a, custom, of, of a made ship that you will then use to fight your opponents. There's a variety of different ways in which you can play the game. With the starter set, it comes with one to two players, but there are other game modes as well that you can utilize. This is all about customization and then fighting, combat, utilizing your tactics to get in range of your opponents to outmaneuver them and do some serious damage. You can do damage in a variety of ways actually too. It's not just your main weapons. Some ships might have missiles, which you'll fire on your opponent, placing it on their board, in which case you'll have to remove them by using things like an anti-missile gun that they can get rid of the missiles before they actually hit them. A number of them that do hit can do some serious damage though. Another great way to do damage, like for instance, I had this Scarab Claw Interceptor. If this thing actually plows into the opponent, it can do damage as well. It actually has this thing called Blade Wings where it can kind of push into my opponent and do some serious damage. It also has the ability to, uh, during a collision or a ram, I can re-roll a die of my choosing to do additional damage that way as well. Some ships want to be in close range combat, others like to be very far away. My Saber definitely likes to be farther away. It has less evasion, but it's swifter, it's able to maneuver better, and able to move farther distances at a time. Trying to get behind your opponent is definitely vital to your success, especially against ships that don't have great maneuverability and don't move very far, but their objective 
is to attempt to ram you or attempt to get into close range combat to do serious amounts of damage. I have a great Gatling gun on this Scarab, but it has to get in that range. And basically I wanna get behind my opponent. And so there's all these different things you're like considering as you're playing this game. Not only that, but the board has their own little pieces that you get to utilize that will change um, based on how you create the board. Gaining specific bonuses definitely does help you, especially when it comes to evasion, because in invasion, can, your, your evasion number can increase the amount of, of pips, or I should say the number, on your die that is needed to hit that specific ship. There are definitely ship combinations in this game that are going to be more difficult for you to basically... D d you know, it's going to be a harder matchup. Some matchups are less good than others. I would probably say, for instance, in this specific type of battle here, why well, I have this one who's a little bit more about ramming and collision, and this one who's a little bit more about long range and missiles, this one's probably going to take the cake most of the time because it is able to kind of swiftly move out or it's able to actually make large turns, and that's going to greatly, greatly benefit. And also be able to shoot missiles from a very great distance, whereas this one lacks a lot of a lot long range damage. Damage. It only has one weapon, the CPL2, the, um, the laser cannon it shoots. That's the only one that actually gets in pretty far. All the rest of its stuff is close range, which, that, which is what this is all about. So I would imagine in a team game, this guy can be very beneficial if he's able to sneak in and get a good collision or get in close with his Gatling gun. But overall though, being able to customize your ship and choose your different parts and whatnot is super cool with this game. How there's different types of mechanics to allow you to do damage in different types of ways, and even different types of missiles for that matter is awesome. How they chose to use these um, these these uh, rotation devices that also uh, include your distance that you can move is super cool as well. It feels like it's not a whole lot, especially on the shorter distance. But once you get into the game and you start realizing how much distance matters, that's where it gets really cool. You can, as opposed to other games that involve these things, you can actually look at the distance whenever you choose to uh, to see if you can actually get in range before you uh, attempt to make a, a shot. But the only rule is you cannot actually choose to look at your range after movement. You have to move first before you can look at distance. You can look at distance for shots, but not distance for range. That's the main thing in this game, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I, I, if you like a game with Legos and being able to customize ships and fight against each other, this is going to be a solid game. The ships are actually, when you put them together, you start to see the inform and function, how the ship looks and works, and that's really, really cool. And additionally, the game itself plays a lot like X-Wing. It plays kind of like Warhammer 40K, moving your ships around, utilizing distance. It all works spectacularly. Some fights might not be the greatest matchup, but if you can get in those winning hits and basically outmaneuver your opponent, you can still win the game, and it's even that much tasty when it comes to victory. Yes, this is a wonderful game. The components are excellent. The snap ship parts are really, really, really well made. And it, you can tell that they put a lot of love and care into making sure that these ships all look like ships that are looked very, very different. And how you set them up, you can basically kind of maneuver them to how you want, where it feels like you're actually building something as opposed to just kind of putting a blueprint together. And even the field itself is great. I imagine with this just being the starter set, there's a lot more to come, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing a lot more. I really, really want to play this game with four players, and I, I'm pretty sure there is a, a, a module that allows you to do that. There's also a single-player campaign to it, and I'm hoping maybe even a... Yeah, there is cooperative play as well, so I'd like to try that one as well. And I know some of them require more ships. There's also different scenarios that you can play. At the very back of the book, it explains different scenarios and presets of layouts and all that. This is going to leave you not wanting for quite some time. But even still, they're going to be making more, which is excellent. Overall, Snap Ships Tactics, if you're into this type of a game, is going to be a solid A+. And if you like Legos and customization, another solid A+. I have nothing really bad to say about this game other than you have to be okay with sometimes your ship not matching up to another ship, which is just going to be the case. Otherwise, A+, plus seal of recommendation. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, Snap Ships Tactics. This is just the starter box though, and I'm very much so looking forward to hopefully being able to try the other uh, the other types. And also, I even forgot to mention too, I should pull this out really quick. This is the outro, so I can be a little less formal, even though I wish it wasn't that much, I suppose. But all these extra pieces can go with the ships to allow you to utilize different cards and different types of weaponry. 
but shows you that there's even, even customization in this box. There's at least three different types of setup for these ships alone. And it comes with two ships in the starter box. If you'd like, there's a link down below in the description where you can check out the game, which is gonna soon be on Amazon in the next couple days here. If you're already watching this a couple days after I've released, then it should already be on Amazon for their release. And I believe they also have a Kickstarter as well in the past that funded and uh, does not shock me one bit that it did so. If you would like, you can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button as well. We greatly appreciate it if you think we have earned it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. It's still burning up hot as heck here. Hopefully in the next month or so, I, my face will be less shiny. As always, I look forward to crafting my snapship and destroying the heck out of yours next time.